Hey, what's up, chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be doing a range test on the Motor Goat V3. As of right now, this bike is completely stock and has a single battery iteration. So I'm gonna be using all the pedal assist modes on this and I'll be using throttle as needed. And uh, guys, I have absolutely no idea what to expect as far as range on this bad boy goes. So I have brought the charger along with me just in case stuff gets real because tell you what, guys, I pedaled this thing with the motor turned off and uh, I absolutely would not want to be doing that for any meaningful amount of distance. So anyways, guys, that's enough small talk. What do you say we get right out there on the road and see how many miles this thing can get? Come on, guys, let's go. All right, guys, well, you know what? You're in luck today because I remembered to reset my odometer. You know, I know some of you might be thinking, why don't you use Strava? I've mentioned it before, but Strava on my current phone is extremely inaccurate and it just doesn't work very well. So at some point I'll be getting a new phone or a dedicated uh, GPS device. But for as of now, we have to rely on the odometer on the bikes themselves. So we're showing 71.7 volts right now on the meter, 100% battery. So the thing is with this bike, I feel like the pedal assist really isn't gonna uh, add much to the range because when you start pedaling, it's basically just overpowers you with the motor anyway. So it's like pedaling is basically like just turning the throttle on on this bike. At least that's how it feels to me. So I'm a bit apprehensive because my typical range test course is about 30 miles. We're just gonna have to see what it's looking like at about halfway and uh, go from there. This is a 60 volt, 60 volt, 25 amp hour battery. So it's a little bit bigger than the other 60 volt bikes. But um, I feel like this bike also puts out more power. So it's gonna be a learning experience, guys, for all of us, all parties involved. And you know, I wanna address something because I've seen a lot of the comments on my, my initial GOAT video about these turn signals here. Like, oh, your turn signals are on backwards. It's like, look guys, maybe that's the way GOAT wants you to put them on. But I personally like them this way. Look, they're much more aerodynamic for starters. And uh, I don't really use my turn signals. So I don't care if the people in front of me know which direction I'm going. And personally this way, if I use the turn signals, not only like people on the side of me or behind me will know where I'm going even more than they would with just the rear ones, I will notice that this thing's still turned on and I'll remember to turn it off. So guys, I'm on team backwards uh, as far as the turn signals go. So, you know, that's up to you. If you want to put do what the man tells you, put them on pointing forward. I won't make comments on your videos telling you to turn them around. I'm having a lot of fun with this bike so far. It's, it's a fun little, uh, you know, it's a little motorcycle. It's definitely not the same style bike as those other ones. I don't find myself taking, uh, you know, little offshoots on the trails as much as this. Well, this is full suspension. It's very stiff, a bit unpleasant with the way this thing rides and uh, it's got street tires and it's just not really designed for that. So do you want me to tell you more reasons? Or are you gonna be okay with that one? So I have noticed, uh, Whereas the other bikes, I can kind of cruise at 25 miles an hour on pedal assist three, no problem. This bike on its middle pedal assist setting, pedal assist two, I can cruise right around 30 miles an hour, fairly easy. And on pedal assist three on this one, I can get up to about 40, you know, just cruising in the high 30s to low 40s pretty easily. Definitely not gonna get much of a, as much of a workout on this bike because you probably can't see how much resistance. My legs are just moving right now. They're not, I don't feel like they're doing anything at all. But you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the blood do, get going a little bit as long as we're outside. We'll catch up with you in a little bit. Illegal dumping is a crime. Isn't that kind of implied by the term illegal dumping? Anyways, guys, we're at our first update right now, 5.6 miles. This is still showing 100% on the battery and 71% on the 71.7 volts, which means I don't trust this battery gauge whatsoever. 
So I notice I've have gotten it down like 80%. So I, I'm guessing there's some sort of buffer in there. But anyways, guys, the jury's still out. I haven't ridden this bike enough to know really what to expect out of the battery gauge. But I want to give you our first update and crack the obligatory uh, illegal dumping joke. And then, you know what, guys, we're going to go ahead and keep going. I do have to say this bike is 105 pounds, I believe. And you feel it. This is a heavy bike. It definitely doesn't feel as nimble as those super light 85 pound e-bikes I'm used to riding. That was a joke that all these e-bikes are pretty heavy, minus my Turbo Levo feels like a feather when I ride it now, but oh man, yeah. This is what I was talking about. This is definitely not uh, off-road suspension. I think I have to go see a chiropractor after this. I want to have to look in to see if they have a lighter spring available for the rear of this bike, because this is a... Uh, this uh, the rear spring on this thing is really stiff. I feel like it's set up for somebody who weighs like, you know, this bike is set up for 300 pound plus. It's not really an issue when you're on asphalt, but when you're on anything bumpy, you feel it. <laughs> okay, we made it. We made it. Back onto the asphalt, guys, where this thing belongs trucking right along. I'm not going to be going too fast on this trail because this is a pretty uh, decently populated trail with lots of people using it, so I'm not going to be going through here at 40 miles an hour. We're unrestricted guys, but we're not savages. Yeah, this bike feels awesome on pavement. Not so awesome off-road. Yeah, once this bike gets moving, it feels like uh, it doesn't want to stop. It feels like it would, this bike feels like it would just coast for a very long time. I, it's probably uh, because of the direct drive motor. The gears and the typical geared hub motors do have a lot of resistance. So like you let off the gas on those, you can kind of feel those motors want to naturally slow themselves down. Where this, I'm not doing anything and look at it, it's just 22. It's not really slowing down at all. It's like it just keeps rolling and coasting and coasting. So yeah, I feel like this bike is more efficient at rolling. Anyways guys, uh, I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit when there's something to update you on. All right, guys, we are at 10 miles now and it's still showing 100% and 71.7 .7 volts. So I guess you could say I'm slightly suspicious on the accuracy of these. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off and turn it back on and see if that updates the voltage. So guys, I know you probably have some suggestions in the comments about settings in the computers or something's plugged in wrong. This is exactly how I got the bike. I've made no changes at all to the computer. I. Uh, yeah, so this is completely stock bike. This isn't about changing settings or doing anything. I just want to ride it exactly how I got it, and this is how it is. So here it is. Now we'd updated when I turned it off and on. 92%, 68.5 volts, and uh, let's keep going. That makes me feel a little better that it's at least updating, so uh, I don't want to have too much of a false sense of security out here and get stuck too far from home. So, you know, but what is a range test without some fat, you know, we're gonna do some top speed as well. 40, 41 there for a second. We are going into some wind, 42. Uh, we're gonna slow down here. Ooh, man, this bike really gets moving. It's hard to explain, but it, has, it definitely has a different feeling than those other uh, geared hub motor bikes. This thing just wants to go. And once it starts spinning up, it's like it just keeps creeping up faster and faster and faster. It's like a momentum, you know, it's a snowball, it's just getting bigger and bigger. So I'm definitely enjoying riding this thing. The seat is soft, I'm enjoying it, but it is, it's not the most comfortable seat I've ever had, but it's definitely nice for this style of bike, that's for sure. I find myself moving around a little bit to find just the right spot. But we're just gonna keep going here. So I don't know guys, if you have a goat in the comment, if you have a goat, let me know in the comments, does your battery gauge have the same behavior? You know, it's possible something's not plugged in or tight, or I don't know, but it, it, just, it just updated there from 92 to 91, so it is updating now, it looks like. I think this bike 
what really excels at like uh, being a commuter bike if you're just gonna be riding around in the city. So if you're gonna be hitting trails or roads, this bike's gonna be awesome to just commute on and get going fast. If you wanna get across town in a hurry, you can do it on this bike, no problem. This bike cruises at 30 miles an hour like it's nothing. Like I said, I was definitely skeptical about this style of bike because I like pedaling. Uh, you see I'm pedaling now, I'm not just using the throttle. I can get resistance on it if I really up the RPM, but yeah, these bikes are definitely pedals. It kind of feels like an afterthought. I'll probably put a bigger chain ring on the front of this at some point. I'm not sure what the stock chain ring is. I'll probably be going up 10 teeth from whatever this is and see how that works out. This bike goes pedals really easily. You notice I'm riding a little bit faster now. That's because I have a whole new faith in humanity now that the battery gauge is updated. So I'm going to be a little reckless with the power here for a minute. This guy's not going to like this. This is because I'm a far superior athlete, clearly. I can pass a road biker like that, no problem, because I'm just in better shape than he is, and he's gonna have to accept that. The bike trails in this immediate town here, Antioch and Brentwood, you can ride around on these pretty quick, and not people aren't too bad out here, but ever, right over the hill from here, there's a trail called the Iron Horse Trail, and it goes through some like more uppity areas, and people on that trail are such assholes on your left they always yell at you like you do anything wrong it's like you're doing things wrong on their trail like those people have like sticks in their asses i think they go in the mornings like they're gonna hey i want to get up and i want to go yell at people on the bike trail that's their that's their whole goal especially with e-bikes because those people on road bikes think they they're like on a higher plane of existence than other everyone else they just think they're really better than you i don't get it personally it's kind of ridiculous but anyways, guys, I'm not gonna rant and rave about road bikers and their stupid spandex suits this whole ride. All right, guys, we're at 12.7 miles, and here's normally where I go off the trail here and use throttle only, but today we'll be using throttle only, but staying on the trail. My shins are very happy about this, by the way, because I feel like a deer running through brush when I'm out there. This is much better. So this is a cherry orchard, and you can come out here and pick your own cherries. And it's weird because I've talked to a lot of the locals around here and not many people that live around here actually come out here and do this. But my office is based in San Francisco and I've had a bunch of coworkers tell me like, oh, we're going to Brentwood this weekend to go pick cherries. So it's kind of weird, like people from out of this area love to come out here and do uh, farm work on the weekends and pay for it. But you know, the people that live out here don't seem that interested. But I guess if you live right here, you could just hop this fence and get as many cherries as you want. Easy as that. Follow free for more tips on saving money on your produce. Once again in the mean streets of downtown Brentwood, these people are having what's known as graduation parties. People in Antioch don't graduate, so we don't have those out here. They, I guess they can, you do good enough in school that you can actually uh, go to the next level or you can even get out of school. I didn't know that. Anyways, now all of a sudden this thing wants to uplate all the time. Now we're at 80% and 66.9 volt. I, uh, I have mixed feelings about this because you know, it had 100%. I thought we were gonna be able to ride forever. But uh, you know, unfortunately it looks like this thing is gonna start burning down. Hi guys. I'm on YouTube right now. We're at 15.6 miles, 80%, 66.9 volts. Doing uh, pretty good. I think we're on track. I mean, you can never tell with these things, but we are on track to probably do 40 miles. Oh, see, I hit my flashers here, but I wouldn't know that if I had them on the right way, like you guys think. Oh, I'm pointing forward. What do I care what those people up there get to see? I don't. I want to see the lights. I paid for them. I want to see them. You guys get your bike, you can point your lights whatever which way you want, okay? You can tape them whatever way you want. But I'm gonna have them pointing backwards because that's what I want, okay? I think like 20% uh, of the males in Brentwood drive lifted trucks. Don't quote me on the exact, the exact number, but I think that's pretty accurate. And I think about 40% of the women here have uh, aftermarket racks. 
if you know what I'm saying. I don't really fit in in Brentwood, you know, because I'm such a... I'm from the mean streets of Antioch, and they can smell the, the poverty when I ride by, so I can't be out here for too long without paying my mellow ruse. There he is. We're just motor goating around town right now. <laughs> Am I a bad person, guys? Comment if I'm a bad person. This bike is great for hooligans. You know, I was a law-abiding nice boy earlier today. Now I'm out here screeching my tires without a care in the world. I think I just got pooped on. You see that? Either a bird pooped on my finger and I wiped it off, or that's a bug, but something just hit me. Maybe it's karma. Told you they don't like people from Antioch out here. Hey, I'm a YouTuber. Nice, peaceful day out here in the park. We don't want anything to interrupt that, would we? All right, guys, we are at the halfway point. This is where the historic John Marsh house is at. Got you a better view. We are now at 19.7 miles, 74%, 65.9 volts. I have to say, guys, so far, this is greatly exceeding expectations, but like I said, I don't really know how much I can trust the battery gauge, but if it keeps up like this, this could be a long day. I'm expecting over a 40 mile range, so we'll see. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to get out of Brentwood because there's been a there's been reports of somebody with guns out on the trail. So yeah, I gotta get going before it's too late. This bike really likes to cruise at high rates of speed. We're riding. See how fast we can get going here. Look, I'm pedaling. I'm helping. 45. 46, 47, four, I saw 48 there. Woo, we're cooking guys. This bike feels super stable at this speed. 48, yeah, this is no problem at all. Ooh, I saw 50 there, 50 miles an hour. And let's test these brakes. No problem, yeah. 21.4 miles, man, boy. Yeah, I'll tell you what, fellas, this could be, uh, we could be in for quite a long ride today. Five miles in, 65% battery showing, and we are coming up to my new favorite part of the ride, the brand new overpass that 90% of the time you have all to yourself when you ride through here. Check it out. Oh, there's someone else coming up. I'm going to have to share this whole thing with one other person, unfortunately. tires still look pretty much brand new this is a 60 volt 25 amp hour battery it says on here right here this is a 1500 watt hour battery the other 60 volt bikes are 1200 watt hour batteries so rough math that's 25 percent bigger on this battery those other bikes get typically i got around 38 miles on both of them so if i did my math correct 38 times 1.25 gives me a total of 47.5 miles. Now guys, I was absolutely not mentally prepared to do a 47.5 mile ride today, but it kind of looks like we're at 62% now at 25 miles. We are definitely, looks like we are on track to do up above 40, no problem. Let's keep going though. Let's see where will we end up at? All right, guys, we are at an important crossroads here, literally and figuratively, because this is typically where I go back towards my house, but you know, we are nowhere close to being dead on this battery. I'm at 56% on the battery here, 
63.2 volts and 30.2 miles. So far the range is exceeding my expectations by quite a bit, but uh, I'm not gonna head home because there's really not enough trail that direction. So I'm gonna get a little creative and take a further route. You know, I'm gonna turn this bike off and on again and see if maybe the uh, percentage updates more. It seems like it did just stick at 100% for a long time and then like it starts to go, now it seems like it's going down in a more linear, normal rate. Oh, wow, very interesting. So I was just at 56%. I turned the bike off and then back on. Now we're showing 29% and 59 volts. So uh, who knows at this point. Well guys, we're back on our uh, original route like we had planned the entire time, right? So I don't even know what's going on anymore. I think the goat's just playing mind games with me. We are at 30.5 miles. Let's see how fast we can get going here. 35, 37, 38. 40, 41, we're cooking guys, 42, oh, and we hit the light. So we're showing 34.3 miles, 27%, 58 volts. Let's turn this off and turn it back on again and see what it shows then. Ooh, 14%, even worse. So yeah, well this is a 50 amp controller or 25% more power on the controller and 25% more capacity on the battery. So it's kind of, I'm guessing, evening, out, evening itself out. So it's bigger battery, but it's also putting out the equivalent and more power, which is gonna drain it at relatively the same rate. Follow me for more science and math, guys. We're coming up on the curb test. The one that I magically did the first time I tried. Let's see how far we get this time. Oh, uh. Oh, decent. Got about a third of the way. I don't think the goat's very happy with me right now, I'll tell you that much. 17 miles an hour. This is where this bike had a full charge. I'd be cruising at 30 right about now. 37.6. We're getting close though, guys. We're getting close. This bike is getting heavier by the second. 38 miles, fellas. Oh, it's showing. Oh, I think it's dead, guys. It is dead. Calling it. We are calling it right here, right where we begun. It's actually still got a little power, but the voltage meter is flashing. All right, guys, we're ended right where we began, right here, 38.1 miles. What a whirlwind of emotion that was. I mean, we had ups and downs. That just took us all over the place. I was thinking maybe we're gonna be in for a 50 mile ride. I mentally prepared myself for that only to be hit with the reality that we're gonna be doing right about 38.1 miles. So I'm actually really impressed with that, especially with the power of this thing outputs and the speeds you ride on this bike. But in the end, when I started to do the math, it kind of works out to be what I was expecting anyway. So 38.1 miles is a very good range for just the one battery. If you get two batteries on this thing, man, you're gonna go paint the town red. You're gonna have range galore. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and oh yeah, and don't forget, Stay unrestricted. Peace.